So in this episode, we're finally going to finish building the 609 axle. You guys watched in a previous episode, I already put together the high pinion 9 inch that we're going to drop in here. Now I'm going to put together the knuckles, install the axles, get this thing complete hub to hub. I'm going to go over some of the pros and cons of building a custom axle like this. We're going to weigh this thing at the very end and see if I was close to my goal of getting this thing as light as the Dana 44. So if you have any guesses on how much this thing weighs, drop it down in the comments. Well, let's put this axle together. The foundation of this axle build is a Spider 9 housing from Spider Tracks Off Road. I picked the housing and knuckles up used, and they looked like they had been sitting in a shed for quite a while and they needed some TLC. I got extremely lucky and I found this housing that was a driver drop differential. It had a 65 inch wheel mount surface already, and it had the Spider Tracks Ultimate Steering Knuckles. This housing had some very nice fabricated 3 link and coilover mounts already on it, and that saved me a ton of time on the install. Now you're probably not going to be as lucky as me and find an axle that fits it exactly how you need it to, but you can buy a blank housing from many different manufacturers and then you just cut the tubes down to the width that you need. I've never built an axle that used Spider Tracks knuckles before and I gotta say, these things are freaking awesome. Spider Tracks fabricates the entire knuckle so you can weld anywhere on it that you need to. They could turn up to 50 degrees and let's be honest, these things just look badass. These knuckles do not use a kingpin or a ball joint, but instead a 3 quarter inch bolt with shim washers goes through a spherical bearing to attach the knuckle to the housing. It's an incredibly strong design and it's fairly easy to service. Putting the knuckle on for the first time was a bit challenging. The trick is to put the top bolt through, get the shoulder washer on, then you start the bolt through the upper bearing and swing the knuckle into place. Lining everything up proved to be a little bit more challenging than advertised. After setting up one knuckle, it was really easy to do the passenger side. I figured out the best way to align everything and it went much smoother. These knuckles accept a 1999 to 2005 Ford unit bearing. The outer subshaft is the OEM length but I need to measure the length for the inner axle shafts. I bought this pretty nifty 9 inch axle shaft gauge from Rough Stuff Specialties. You place the gauge on the housing and then you just measure from the center of the U joint to the edge of the little rectangle box. This gave me some confidence that the custom shafts I was getting cut is going to be the right length the first time around. Here is a side by side of a Dana 44 axle and my new 35 spline Cromoly axle going into the 609. The U-joints are Yukon Super joints and these things are beefy. It is a solid chunk of chromoly steel and they eliminate the needle bearings in the caps. To assemble these joints, first you coat the cross and the caps with anti-seize and then you place the o-ring seals into the caps. There are relief cuts on the cross to assemble these into the axle shafts and they can only be installed in one direction. Maybe because I did this when I was feeling sick, 
but I really struggled to get these U-joints together at first. I had a hard time getting these full circle snap rings into place. This part of the process felt like one of those weird puzzles that once you figure out how to solve it, it goes together super easy. I mainly just struggled for about 30 minutes getting these dang snap rings on. The first snap ring goes on easy, but to get the second one on there, you have to wiggle the cross and tilt the axle and then somehow the snap ring wiggles itself between the two of them. Here at the Reckless Wrench Garage, sometimes we make mistakes and then you get to watch and laugh. I got so fed up with the snap rings when I was assembling the axle shafts, I didn't even realize that I was holding both of the inner shafts. Once I realized that I was putting the wrong shafts together, I had to step back, take a break, and then just laugh at myself. You guys ever have one of those moments where you just get distracted with something and then you're not really focus on what you're doing, and then you do something really stupid? Yeah, that's what I just did. Uh, I messed with those dang snap rings for so long trying to figure out how the heck to get them on there and then I wasn't paying attention when I finally figured them out and I was super excited and I started throwing axle shafts together and uh, next thing you know I have my uh, both inner axle shafts uh, put together so now I created more work for myself and have to take them apart real quick and then continue on a few moments later The axles get sealed inside with these double seal housings from spider tracks. Two seals get pressed in and then you slide them into the axle tubes with a little RTV. This should prevent any oil from leaking out of the differential. Remember those U-joints that gave me problems not too long ago? Well, they're back again. I needed to install the high pressure Zerk fittings into the ends of the U-joints. It turns out, the axle shaft won't fit into the housing with these fittings installed. They have to be installed once the axle is inside the knuckle. Build and learn, I guess. Build and learn. Oh yeah, we got engagement. That's what we like to see. The Spider Tracks knuckles accept a 99-2005 Ford unit bearing. I have these ones machined for a 5 on 55 bolt pattern so I didn't have to change my wheels, and they're bored out to accept a 35 spline axle shaft. After doing as much research as I could on brakes for a custom axle, I chose to go with Spider Tracks' 14 inch solid rotor and a Wheelwood Dynalite 4 piston caliper. This setup is incredibly lightweight and the rotors are massive. I couldn't find much information about using this brake setup on a vehicle that isn't strictly off road, but Spider Tracks and Wheelwood both seem confident that this should work great since many Ultra 4 race cars run a similar setup and they're going way faster than I ever will be.
We got the full axle put together. We built it all out hub to hub. Real quick, I wanna talk about some advantages and disadvantages of building an axle like this. The biggest disadvantage to this type of axle is going to be the expense. It is definitely more expensive to build a custom axle like the one we just put together than it is to go down to the salvage yard and pick up a Dana 60 and build that out for your rock crawler. However, you can save yourself a ton of money if you cruise the forums, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, go to swap meets. You could find a lot of parts uh, much cheaper from people that have abandoned their projects, parting things out, or going in a different direction. The next disadvantage of this axle is going to be that everything is totally custom on it. So if I'm out in the middle of nowhere and something breaks, I'm not gonna be able to just go into AutoZone or you know order something online real quick and get it fast. A lot of the parts that I did use are backed by incredible companies, so you can get parts very quickly, but it's not going to be the same day. So that can be a disadvantage to some, however, the parts are incredibly strong. I don't foresee a lot of issues with them. Uh, I don't have any wood to knock on, but I shouldn't be running into this issue. And honestly, if something like my differential is breaking or anything like that, I have much bigger problems to worry about than acquiring another one rapidly. So those are the couple of cons of this axle setup, but I think the list of pros far outweighs any disadvantage to this setup. So. A disadvantage was that it was totally custom and it's hard to get parts for, but an advantage of it is it is totally custom. Like you could build this thing exactly how you want it. So if you need a driver's drop, passenger drop, you can get the exact width. You could put um, the knuckles on there and when you weld them on there, your pinion angles and casts are gonna be exactly how you need them. You're not gonna be you know, trying to work around another setup. So it being custom is a huge advantage. Now the strength of this axle is going to be the next major advantage it has. Uh, I built this with 35 spline Camoli axle shafts, a awesome nine inch differential, a high pinion. The housing itself and the knuckles, the way they're designed, you're not gonna find an OEM housing that's anywhere near the strength of this. Our next advantage is going to be the weight. When I built this axle, I set out to make an axle as strong or stronger than a Dana 60, but as light as a Dana 44, and I definitely exceeded that goal. So, um, I got some numbers here with weights on it. From Google, I was able to find a high pinion Dana 44 steering is roughly around 400 pounds, depending on the exact setup. A Dana 60 uh, steering is roughly around 500 pounds. Now, my axle is lighter than both of those. So if you haven't put your guesses in the comments, make sure you do it right now. The housing itself, 93.8 pounds. Knuckles are 25.4 pounds each. The differential was 79 pounds. Axle shafts and U-joints, 49.6 pounds. Unit bearings, 17 pounds each. The brake rotors, 11.2 pounds each. The calipers, 3.2 pounds each. Uh, very lightweight parts. Uh, all of that total with all hardware and everything came out to 336 pounds. Now once I add some oil um, and whatnot to it, I suspect I'm gonna be well under 345 pounds, which is ridiculous for how strong this axle is. Well, that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed and maybe learned something about building a fully custom axle. Uh, on the next episode, you guys are going to see this three link that you kind of got a preview of already. Anyway, make sure you check out our website, recklesstrenchgarage.com. Uh, we got hats and stickers there. We have t-shirts and sweatshirts on Teespring. Go ahead, all the links are down in the description for that. Drop a comment down below, hit that like button, and until next time, stay reckless. Good workout. Practice your deadlifts. Hey Cinder, can you say goodbye? Can you say goodbye? Good girl.